So, uh, hello, my name is Jesse Wong, and I believe your name is Paul. My name is Paul St. Hilaire. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. So, I'm just going to be asking you a few questions. Okay. My first question is, did you live in OLB during World War II? Do I what? Did you live in OLB during World War II? Did, during World War II? No. Um, I, uh, I didn't come around until 1951. Any of the catastrophic events in OLB? Um, I was here when the uh, pier burnt down in, in the early, I think that was early 70s or late 60s. I was here for that and um, been here for some good hurricanes, but not really catastrophic events that I can remember. Uh, have they affected you in any way? No, they really didn't affect me in any way. Um, if there are any uh, things that changed in OB that or drastically changed uh, throughout your time in here, have you been affected in any way? Well, I don't know what you mean, have I been affected in any way? No. I, there have been a lot of changes in Old Orchard since I've grown up, but none that have affected, affected me negatively or, or, well, maybe a lot positive, but no, no real negative effects. Are there any stories about the history of Old Orchard Beach you'd like to share with us? Well, I really don't have, well, when you say stories about the history of Old Orchard Beach, I was on the town council when I was 21 years old, and um, I was one of the one of the people responsible for putting Jerry Plant on the council as excuse me as the uh, uh, town manager of Old Orchard, and uh, we made quite a few changes at that point. We we uh, bought the land to build a new school on. We bought the land to build the new fire complex. Uh, on and uh, uh, we made some changes in Old Orchard Beach that needed to be done. I really don't understand this process though. What this is kind of redundant, don't you think? Mm -hmm. um, what made you want to stay in Old Orchard as an adult? Uh, I don't live in Old Orchard Beach currently. I live in Biddeford. Um, we started a business here at a young age, and uh, we grew a business here, and uh, uh, Maine is a good place to live, and Old Orchard Beach is a fun place to live at certain times of year. Uh, what was that business called, if you don't mind me asking? Well, the business evolved over a number of years, but it was basically, uh, I started a rubbish company in Old Orchard Beach called Tryan. TRI-AN and then in later years that company was built and sold. We formed another company, uh, myself and my brother, uh, called Astro Waste Services. Uh, we built that company and sold it in the late 90s, middle 90s actually. And then we teamed up with the uh, Blow family here on Old Orchard Beach and started another company called BBI Waste Industries and uh, grew that company and sold it uh, again in uh, uh, 2012. Is that company still here in Maine? The company is still here in Old Orchard Beach. It's, it operates under the name Casella Waste Systems or Pine Tree Waste, which is the same company. And um, it still operates in the property that we that we own, still own, uh, and when we sold the company we did not sell any property, so we still, um, we still maintain a property and lease it to the company that bought our company. Do you miss being a kid? Do I miss being a kid? I think every older person misses being a kid, okay? <laughs> What did the pier look 
like when you first came? The pier was um, oh, a little bit longer than it is now. And it had the original merry-go-round in it. And, uh, but when I grew up, the pier was after the big band era. So that had come and gone as I was growing up. So it's, uh, it's probably a hundred feet shorter than what it used to be. What was one of your favorite places to hang out around here in Old Orchard? The beach, naturally. That's why everybody comes to Old Orchard Beach. <laughs> Makes sense. This drives me nuts. I oh, know. Yeah. Uh, us too. <laughs> <laughs> landmarks that people may not know about today that you'd like to share? The bigger landmarks, uh, the biggest one is probably the pier uh, in my my uh, growing up. But I didn't come around, you know, till the 50s. So I think some of the older people here will be able to give you more landmarks, such as the old kite track. Uh, it was a racetrack off Walnut Street, which was commonly called the kite track. But that was before my time. And uh, the big bands off the pier were before my time. But uh, there is one landmark that is still here in Old Orchard Beach. It's on Portland Avenue um, at the head of Wal Walnut Street, which a lot of people probably would not know about. And that's the uh, what I would term as the Emerson Cummings home because the Cummings family owned a home that used to house black performers that used to play at the pier. Because back then, there was still segregation and a lot of blacks could not stay at a lot of hotels because they were black. And that house housed a lot of the black performers because uh, it was... Um, um, he was tolerant of blacks at that point in history. Did you happen to see any of the performances with all those colored performer, performers? Uh, by who? By the, any of the performers who were colored at the time? No, no, that was before my time. Um, Else you'd like to share? Well, I just, you know, as we were talking about the Emerson Cummings, I call it the Emerson Cummings property because Emerson Cummings was a good friend of mine. Uh, he, he's long gone now, but, and the property may be called something different, but that is a very, that, that's a piece of property that should almost be landmarked in Old Orchard as well as probably Maine because of its significance to, um, um, the black performers of that era of the, you know, 30s, 40s, in, you know, 30s and 40s, uh, which was, like I said, before my time. Um, what, did you have any other jobs in this town? I worked for the town of Old Orchard as a teenager, like most kids did when I was growing up. My father was the public works director at that point in time. And he hired a ton of uh, high school kids going to school, and we pick, we cleaned the beach by hand, picked up papers by hand. The town used to pick up its own rubbish at that point in time, and I worked on a rubbish truck at that point in time. In the summertime, I worked during the beach. I had many jobs during the summers, one of them cleaning the beach, one of them picking up trash. Do you have a favorite memory at all? Yeah, the favorite memories are being young and growing up uh, on the beach in um, um, and playing on the beach. Uh, so, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how old were you when you came here into Old Orchard? Uh, I was, uh, I... Here, 
here to take the lead. Take the top. You seem confused. Do we have to do something different? Oh, uh, no, it's just, I don't think. They were just going to take pictures. Right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't. I, when I was brought here, when I was uh, four years old, I believe. Uh, so you had a lot of experiences as a child, you know? Yes, I do. Oh. Um. What was your childhood like in Obi? The childhood was fun in Old Orchard Beach because we, growing up here in the summertime on the beach, is a fun place to grow up. Did you go through the school system here in OB or another one? I went through the school system in Old Orchard Beach. Yes, I did. You and have, oh, I graduated as a class president in 1971. <laughs> that must have been uh, an honor. Well, at that time it was more fun than anything else. <laughs> was there any experiences that were unusual at the school system? No, um, the school system was um, a lot different than it is today in the sense that uh, the teachers were um, had a lot more latitude than they do today. And in that I mean that, uh, uh, you know, if a teacher uh, thought you were out of line and had no issue with uh, Slapping you in the back of the head and straighten you out. <laughs> Were you uh, one of the people to be slapped in the back of the head? Of course I was. <laughs> everybody was. <laughs> Not everybody, but everybody, you know, anybody that stepped out of line was, was uh, reprimanded, you know, yeah. differently than you do it today. Job here in the first job I had here in Old Orchard Beach was working for the town growing up in high school. Uh, was there anything that you particularly liked about that job? It was a summer job and uh, we were outside and uh, you started early in the morning and got done early in the day and uh, had the rest of the day to goof off. Um, what year did you graduate high school? 1971. Uh, was there anything that you did after high school? Like, I don't know. That was, our, that was a bad question, sorry. Like, let me rephrase that. Was there anything that you wanted to do after high school? We didn't have a lot of choice. A lot of us kids growing up because uh, our parents, my parents anyway, were not wealthy or did not have a lot of money, so we had to work. And I was not a college student. I, I mean, my grades weren't going to get me into college, so I had to work. Do you want to ask a few questions then? What other jobs did you have in the uh, Growing up, um, like I said, I worked uh, for the town during the summer months, and then when I graduated, I had a small trash route. I used to pick up trash at the local trailer parks. At that point in time, they called them uh, trailer parks because they used to do uh, tenting, uh, tenting parks that were only open in the summertime. Do you have any stories about your jobs? Not really. It was uh, uh, more fun than anything. That uh, uh, 
no particular stories. I believe I already asked you this question, but we don't have, there isn't too much else to ask. Uh, so how was our gentleman trip coming back to the golf course? Uh, well, I was going to ask, is there anything else you'd like to share? I was on the council, the town council, I got elected to the town council at a young age. I think it was 71 or 72, maybe 72. I don't remember the dates, but um, we, um, as I mentioned earlier, allocated the funds to buy the um, property that the new high school sits on now and the property that the uh, uh, police and fire station sits on now. And we bought the property for the uh, public works uh, facility up off the uh, Emerson Cummings Boulevard. And um, um, I was on the council when we um, we hired Jerome Plant, which was very controversial at that point in time. And um, I think we made a difference in some of the things that we did. Looking back at the at the time, it was very controversial. But uh, uh, when I graduated from high school, the high school was in the building attached to the Larangia School. Was uh, Mr. Plant one of your friends? Um, no, he wasn't really a friend. He was. Uh, I mean, we became friends, but uh, I, um, he was a local guy. He was a local politician that had worked and been in the state legislature and worked for state legislators. Uh, I believe that uh, ends it. And uh, if you want to share anything else, feel free. Well, I don't really know what else to share, but growing up in Old Orchard is a fun place to grow up. It's uh, not a high crime area. And um, what kid wouldn't want to grow up in the sun and, and on the beach in the summertime in Old Orchard. Good place to grow up. And uh, that about ends it. Thank you. Um, what year did you move slash born in OLB? What year did we move to OLB? Yeah. 1996. But remember summers. I came every summer since I was six weeks old. That was 1932. Um, do you have any siblings? And if so, do they live in town? No, I have no siblings, but I, um, my parents boarded a child that was considered a foster sister. She was 13 and I was 15. And she came here summers with us. Okay. Um, where did you live in like, your childhood? Mm -hmm. Where did I live? I lived yeah. in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island, right on the shore of the Narragansett Bay. But we chose to come to our family cottage in Old Orchard for the summer. You had a family cottage. When was that, Peg? My great-grandfather bought our cottage in 1898. My grandmother was 12 years old then. And he came from the Boston area, and he wanted a healthy place for his daughter, who had a lot of um, health needs. And he chose Old Orchard Beach. And it was the place to be at the turn of the century. It was quite a Victorian place. <laughs> is it still around? Hmm? Did, is the cottage still Oh, here? yeah, that's where we live. It's been renovated into a year-round house now. Oh, you're still in the cottage? That's so cool. So yeah, that, what's, I have a picture of it. Do you? What yeah. street is it on? Fern Park Avenue. Do you know where oh, Park I live Island? there. You live I there? live down that street. You know the brown house that the kids used to call the witch's house? Uh, the brown house all the way down the road? No, it's, um, you know, Idlewild? Idlewild. It rings a bell, but... You know where the, um... Fern Park is from Saco Avenue. The Fern Park that goes down the road. Yeah, it's a first block. You know where Ivy is? 
Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. You probably walk by all the yeah. time. That's a great house. Yeah. Do you guys want a shot of the house? Yeah. But here it is in 1898. I don't know if that would come out on the uh, picture. Oh, wow, that's cool. Isn't it cool? Yeah. So, and that's what it looks like today. You want to get a shot of this? Yeah, this. Can you see? Yeah. Uh, wait, move it that way a little bit. I didn't know what they were doing that or not. But. Such a good idea. That was yeah. a great idea. Okay. We put this okay. together when we were in you know, Italian. Childhood like in OOB. What was my childhood like? It was wonderful. I already told you we came summers. Yeah. And um, spent a lot of time at the beach. And from our house, we used to be able to walk into the woods. And... Um, we did a lot of blueberry picking. We enjoyed our walk in the woods. Now there are a lot of houses where our woods used to be. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite experience in OOB? My favorite? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. I just loved everything. And um, I loved the beach. I was a beach a beach bum. Is that what they call us? <laughs> Did you have a favorite ride? A favorite ride? Yeah. The merry-go-round. Oh, yeah. And they used to have those beautiful carved horses before they burned in, the, I think, 1948 or something like that. Fire was? Uh, there was yeah. one in 48. There was one in yeah. 69. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah, the one. 40, one of those big fires mm -hmm. took the whole merry-go-round away. Yeah. And it's still nice, but... It used to be just gorgeous. It was world famous. Yeah. Okay. That was really good. So, um, did you go through the OOB school system? No, I didn't. No? Good. No. In the summer, no school. <laughs> Total vacation. Yep. Best part of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um... What was your first job in OOB? My first job? Yeah. I remember that very well. It was at a bakery that used to be on Atlantic Avenue, where there's a, one of the veterans clubs now it used to be a bakery. And um, I just waited on customers when they came in. And um, that was my first job. I was 16. Do you remember what you got paid? An hour? <laughs> no, but it wasn't <laughs> much. <laughs> that is great. It wasn't much. But. Um, what other jobs did you have in town? And then the following year, and for about three years, all the way through college, I worked at a hotel called the Seaside House. Have you ever oh, heard yeah. of it? I've it's where the that. Waves is now. Oh, yeah. And I waited table. And um, most of our... Um, people that we waited on would come for vacation and stay for a week at a time so we got to know the people at our table really well mm -hmm. and no I didn't get paid much and for a whole week of serving people would leave like ten dollars which didn't seem like much for all the work we put in <laughs> but we're going back to the 1950s so it was different Okay, that was really. Um, did you like experience what it was like in OOB during World War II? Yes, I did. And there was one summer that we couldn't get enough gas um, for the car, and uh, we weren't able to come and open the cottage, oh. and that was a big disappointment. Yeah. I lived in Rhode Island on the shore of the Narragansett Bay, and. Um, after the war, we found that German U-boats had been going right up the bay into Providence. So they were oh. right outside our house, and we didn't know it. Wow. Did you have taken the train then? One year we did take the train. And a lot of people took the train in. And, uh, but the next year, travel was difficult. All around. Mm -hmm. I think it was hard to get train tickets and mm -hmm. I was probably about your age 
to be like, well, younger than you are, 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. about the history of Old Orchard Beach that you'd like to, that you experienced, that you'd like to share with us? Well, I have a lot of stories that I heard from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And right in our neighborhood, there's a Cottage Avenue and a Grove Street. Yeah. And they go either side of the house with a great big um, yard. And my grandmother used to say, that after dinner, people would go to the grove where the house is. Um, it was a grove with beautiful bushes and trees and park benches. And after the evening meal, people would go down and sit on the park benches and visit with their neighbors. And people don't do that anymore. They're all inside their own houses with their own TVs. The idea of going to a park and visiting with neighbors sounds really, um, really nice. I think it was a nice atmosphere. And the streets are aptly named. There are a lot of cottages on Cottage Street that are now year-round houses. And Grove Street on the other side um, was where the Grove was, between the two streets. You probably know those streets. Yeah, I've heard of them. Mm -hmm. I think I have. What would be that drastically changed throughout your time living here? Well, I think I already mentioned the woods yeah. that we used to pick blueberries in uh, houses. And then um, there's a swamp up in there that you really can't enjoy walking through, but that goes up to the ballpark. Okay. And um, a street across from our porch, um, I think. Um, Wildwood Lane. Yeah. Uh, Used to be a dirt road. And when I was a little girl, my father and I walked out the dirt road and crossed Saco Avenue and went down to the Washington Avenue area. And there was a market where they made handmade donuts. Really? We bought fresh donuts there and brought them back for breakfast. Fresh donuts, nothing better than fresh donuts. <coughs> mm -hmm. I said there's nothing better than fresh donuts. No, no. I can still have that smell in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's one memory. Um, um. <clears throat> have you been affected by it in any way? Like, how did it make you feel? Like, with the woods? Oh, I miss the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how does it make me feel? I, I just still adjust, adapt to what's happening at the time. That's the only way to live. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did she talk about that? Because that was yep. devastating. Yes. And... Um, some of the men in the family went out to fight that fire. And, uh, yeah, that's what she talked most about. Her father and um, some of the other men in the area that were staying with us. Um, well, I wasn't there then. But, um, yeah, they went out and helped to fight it, spray water on it, and whatever they did in those days. Yeah, do what they could. Hmm? So do what they do what they no, can. No, I wasn't. I wasn't alive then. <laughs> I, know, I, know. <laughs> I wasn't born until 1932. Yeah. Right. But the guys tried to do what yeah. they yeah. could to help. Yeah. That's, right. mm. That's the way it was. People just pitched in, and, and I think they still do that. I've heard in California where they've had those bad fires, people yeah. pitch in and do what they can. Yeah. What made you want to stay in OB as an adult? Oh, well, I've been coming here every summer of my life. My own parents had um, winterized the house. That meant they had a cement foundation poured under it and um, walls insulated and all the things you have to do to get through a winter. Mm -hmm. And we continued to come and visit them when they lived here full time. 
Ian, it's like we counted the days until we could retire and move to Old Orchard. <laughs> Things to do in Old Orchard. I think I already mentioned the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked walking downtown and going on the rides and going on the merry-go-round and walking out on the pier. Oh, and picking blueberries in the woods. That was a big thing. Did you have a favorite thing to do at Oldie now? Relax. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Peg, you still go on the rides? <laughs> I'm old enough to relax. But about five years ago, we were walking downtown, and I was looking up at one of the rides where people spun around and around. Oh, and, yeah. Uh -huh. And I said, hmm, I don't even have to pay to go on a ride. I can just watch other people be scared. And, <laughs> and while I was watching, I fell right down a curbstone flat oh, on my face. Oh, no. <laughs> so I decided after that I'd do a little less watching. Yeah. <laughs> and do Except for where I was walking. walking. Yeah. Place to hang out and why was it your favorite place to hang out? We're going right back to that beach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still love to sit on the beach and watch the surf and watch the people and feel the warm sand and walk my dogs now. What dog do you have? I have a miniature schnauzer mm -hmm. oh. and a little um, black 18-year-old cockapoo. Oh. Have you seen them? I think so, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Did you ever go dancing or to the roller Yeah, they haven't right? asked about. Is that one of the questions coming up? <laughs> the pier? I think that's maybe a Might hangout Might be on the back, place. but not, not Favorite memories? Seen. Can we go back to yeah, that? Yeah, we can go back yeah. to that. Well, on the pier, it used to be that they had a movie, and then after the feature movie, they put all the chairs aside, and opened the space up for dancing and they had a second they called them b-run movies they weren't as good as the inside movies but they were okay people would go outside and sit outside and watch the second movie and the people that wanted to dance to the big band era um stayed in and danced and danced to the tunes of the big bands and there was a huge crystal ball that spun around, and I dated my husband. He came to Old Orchard to um, spend time with me, and we did a lot of dancing on the pier. Oh, that's so yeah. fun. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Are there any big landmarks that people may not know about today that, may, that you may like to share? Landmarks. I don't know. My grocery store and the donuts isn't exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it depends on your point of view. You might know I like donuts. <laughs> uh, landmarks. Well, the woods. It's not a landmark exactly, but I miss those woods and the blueberry picking. And uh, I don't know. I can't think of a landmark that I miss. Maybe. I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. The blueberry plains is like two minutes away from my house, so. The what? The it's blueberry plains. Oh, like yeah, yeah. A blueberry pickle. You live up there? Yeah. I live by Ross Road. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a, there is one over on yeah. Ross Road. We Do you pick blueberry? Not usually. No? Like, uh, we just kind of forget about it. Like, when we drive by, we're like, oh, we should go blueberry picking. Okay. And then, like, we drive by and say it again, and we just forget about it. <laughs> We couldn't find that place a few years ago when we looked for it. We drove up and down, up and down, and it was like going through someone's yard, <laughs> so we never found it. Now I don't know if we could pick blueberries anymore. <laughs> we can barely bend over. <laughs> it happens when you grow old. <laughs> I'm lucky if I can have a chair to pull myself up on now. The pier look like when you were growing up? Well, it was longer. Yeah. They had that beautiful merry-go-round with the 
cub, cub horses that was famous. And, um, well, I already mentioned the crystal ball and the ballroom at the end of the pier. Um, yeah, it had really nice little shops along it. Some of the shops now <laughs> a little, I don't, it would have been polite to say a little junky. <laughs> you don't have to keep that in the video. <laughs> it, it had some very nice shops. A lot of them sold those little log cabin um, that people burned incense in. And it smelled nice walking along there. Yeah. That's great. And it and there it wasn't completely lined with shops, right? There were areas where you could well, see out into the yeah, ocean. Yeah, you the shops were on one side and then you could see out onto the ocean on the other side. Oh, that's very really cool. I've had heard a lot of complaints about the shops on both sides and taking you away. You can't from see. Them. Yeah. 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 People complain about it's like that. low windows in a restaurant. That's all you can look out. Oh, yeah. right. Unless you're entering. The and there's like no balconies, yeah. so no. like you can't just step out and like see the ocean. No, there were exactly. little balconies, but I spend time twice a year on the pier working on the um, chili fest and the um, chowder fest because the owner of the pier. Um, donates uh, proceeds from it to the Community Animal Watch, which I belong to. Do you miss being a kid? Do I miss being a kid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that, that is loaded. I think I have to say, I've enjoyed every phase of my life. And uh, I'm just now learning what it's like to be 87. I, my spirit is younger than my body and my doctor says that. <laughs> but um, miss being a kid. I think I, I, like I said, I'm just enjoying each phase of my life. I've enjoyed being married and having a family. And mm -hmm. I have four children and Four grandchildren. That's pretty cool. What else you'd like to share? Anything else I'd like to share? Um, well, it was interesting when my parents renovated the house. They couldn't even live in it for a while. They had to rent an apartment. But they um, put the whole house up on logs and somehow lifted it up and poured a cement foundation under it and then dropped it back onto the foundation. So we we came weekends and watched those proceedings and of course my parents were here to watch every day but they put a nice, nice foundation under it. My father did a lot of carpentry so he wanted a nice cellar to work in. Yeah. When did they do that work? 1970, and I'll never forget the date because um, my father carved into um, the front steps my mother's initials in the low. Uh -huh. <laughs> OMG, Orly Melville Gifford. I love it. 1970. <laughs> Did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or pier? Yes. A few, but we more have to enjoy the ball games yeah. than the concerts. We didn't like the big um, the bands at the concerts back about I don't know fifteen years ago. It was like um, very noisy at our mm -hmm. house. And all you could hear was the boom, boom, boom of the drums. And we biked to Ocean Park one day to get away from the sound. And we could hear it way down there. <laughs> so we were happy to see baseball come back there. Did you ever see any of the big bands on the pier? Yeah. I, didn't I mention dancing yeah, to them? Like yeah, but famous 
And you yeah. have the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, one oh, and really? Tommy Dossie. Yeah. <laughs> My Who's husband you? can recite all of them. He's telling someone about that. Who was your favorite? Who, who like, I, wowed you? I liked all of them. I was happy with my my date. Yeah. <laughs> my it was all good. <laughs> Do you go to um, any of the games now? Yes, once in a while. We didn't go, I don't think we went to a single game this summer, but we've been other summers. All right. We kept saying, oh, we're going to go to a ball game. We're going to go to a ball game. And somehow it didn't happen. <laughs> Kind of like my family with the blueberries. Exactly. <laughs> Were you here when the famous big bands played? If so, which band was your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we just went through that. We yeah. just talked about that. <laughs> uh, I, don't know. I don't have anything to add to it. I don't know if I had a... I think I like Glenn Miller because his name keeps coming back. And sometimes they used to play funny songs for us because mm. there was a song, Peg of My Heart, and my name was Peggy, Mar short for nickname for Margaret. And so, of course, I got teased and when Peg of My Heart came on. My husband's name is Richard, and there was a song they used to play named Open the Door, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> He got teased about that. <laughs> but I guess my favorite must have been Glenn Miller since I remember so well. Ride on it? No, but my grandmother used to talk about it. And, um, no, I haven't seen it. Did she use it a lot? She, it was yeah, handy, she, right? Because yeah. it went from Pine Point well, all the way to Camp Ellis? Is that right? I think it went to Portland, too. Uh -huh. When my mother was a little girl, people used to take a, a ship from Boston to Portland, mm -hmm. and then they took some kind of transportation from Portland to Old Orchard. Mm -hmm. That was the way they came here. Or they came by train. And... The cars were just coming into more use then, but at the turn of the century, they often took a boat from Boston to Portland, which seems strange to me. But I know, <laughs> right? Did you ever ride on it? No, but my grandmother used to talk about it. And, um, no, I haven't seen it. Did she use it a lot? She, it yeah, was handy, she, right? Because yeah. it went from Pine Point well, all the way to Camp Ellis? Is that right? I think it went to Portland, too. Uh -huh. When my mother was a little girl, people used to take a, a ship from Boston to Portland, mm -hmm. and then they took some kind of transportation from Portland to Old Orchard. Mm -hmm. That was the way they came here. Or they came by train. And... The cars were just coming into more use then, but at the turn of the century, they often took a boat from Boston to Portland, which seems strange to me. But I know, <laughs> right? When's your birthday's in OLB? Yes, because my birthday is July 3rd, so I um, spent not only spent it in the in OOB, but they usually have fireworks to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, were you on the beach when any of the planes landed? No, I'm not old enough. <laughs> 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 but my grandmother was, and she talked a lot about when Lindbergh landed on the beach. And my mother was in her 20s then. But she was going to a school for dramatic arts college, and so um, she wasn't here. She was off in a play somewhere. Hmm. So, um, but my grandmother talked a lot about it. And when they had the um, flights coming in a couple years ago, 
that meant a lot to me. All I could think of was my grandmother, and I really enjoyed watching those planes. I hope they do it again. I went there for a little bit. I watched some of the planes there. Mm -hmm. It must have been very exciting to have Lindbergh land. Yeah. I can't even... Well, I'm sure, like, everybody in the neighborhood got right. to the beach as fast as they could. <laughs> <Right. the word. laughs> they didn't have TV to find out things. And word traveled by um, word of mouth. mouth. Word yeah. of mouth, yeah. Restaurants like downtown. What were the restaurants like downtown? Yeah. Um, I don't think we ate downtown no. very much. <laughs> <laughs> but that Bellboy restaurant, that's always been there. And um, we usually ate at home back in the old days. Do you um, eat downtown now? Do you like go downtown to eat? Like pier fries or like those I people? always get pier fries. <laughs> I have to get them once a summer. Yeah. Pier fries. That's a favorite. And um, we just recently went to eat at JJ's Eatery. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And um, we get pizza. We always uh, seem to get Lisa's pizza. But my step-grandson, when he was about 12, did some research and got pizza from a lot of different places. And he decided the best place was the pizza place at the entrance to the pier. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he liked it better than any of the others. So, like, did he just get, a, like, a single slice and then... Yeah. Yeah. Really? The one at the front on the pier, over the bills... Rocco's and Lisa's. Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. That, mu that must make a pretty good pizza. We slice. need to try that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to try that now. Are there any stories about the history of Old Orchard Beach that you experienced that you would like to share with us? Oh my goodness, I was born in 1947, so I grew up in the 50s. In the 50s in Old Orchard was pretty cool. I mean, we didn't have cell phones. and um, We had a TV fairly early, but that wasn't a big deal either. So I grew up in what's called the campground area. That's where the high school kids graduate from, the big amphitheater. It wasn't like that back then, and that was like our playground. And um, I think the thing I remember most about that time was my parents had cottages, so I would clean cottages for my parents in our backyard. Um, and going to school, we, I went to the elementary school down in School Street. It's not a school anymore. That's where the original high school had been. And I would walk to school in the morning and walk home for lunch and back. So there wasn't really a lot of gym, but we didn't need it. Um, we all were free to go around town anywhere we wanted to, basically. It seemed very safe. Maybe it wasn't. And I think, um, oh my goodness, looking back, the pier and the casino kind of ended when I was in elementary school. But the Palace Ballroom was still going strong because that's a place I went to a lot when I was in high school. Well, I have to admit that I grew up in Portland and I've only been a resident. City boy right here. I've only been a resident of Old Orchard for 50 years. And actually, I was, still 50 I was, years. I was told. Uh, <laughs> okay, About 35 good. years in, someone from Public Works, a uh, good friend of ours, said, you know what, he says, you can c call yourself a townie now. So, You've been here long enough. Uh, uh, so my, my memory of Old Orchard Beach started in 1969. And uh, we have two boys. Uh, they were both raised in Old Orchard Beach and went to Old Orchard Beach schools, which we've been extremely proud of. Oh for a long time. Uh, small school system, but uh, really good teachers, good schools. Actually, now I'm serving on the school board right now, and I've been for six years. And our baby boy is a principal, I think you all know. Yeah, now at Jameson. Yes. Because yeah. her and Miss Hannah really, yeah. him and Miss Fletcher switched. They did. He kind of likes those young them. guys. Miss Fletcher's okay, but yeah. Mr. Flaherty's. I'm a little prejudiced, but I think he's a pretty cool guy myself. Yeah, going to school here was amazing. I mean, you talk about, I'm, I'm trying to think like what historical things I could connect with. My class was the second class at Jameson School. 
I came, it was fourth grade and fifth grade, and I had been at the elementary school K to three. In the first year Jameson opened, I was in third grade, so I was the second group to come in. And that was the year that Eisenhower was elected president. Oh my God, I can't believe how old I am. Um, but it was, a, it was a, just an amazing school, because the elementary school was kind of old and funky, but Jameson had a door on every classroom you could get out on your own, which was pretty cool. What do you mean by get out on your own? Well, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, we all went out as a class, but rather than everybody lined up in the hall without one big door, each individual class had their own doorway. So I thought the end, we had our own bathroom in the classroom, which was unheard of back then. That, yeah, that was very modern. Back oh, then. yeah. Cool as cool could be. Totally. And I think that's about the time I decided I want to be a teacher. I love my fourth grade teacher, Miss O'Connell, and I just thought, you know, that's a pretty cool job. So that's when this, the, the thought was planted. Anything else? You have more questions, Emily, I'm sure, right? Yep, we do. What are some things in OOB that drastically changed throughout your time living here? And have you bleh, have you been affected by it in any way? That's a typo. How did it make you feel? Okay, um, wow. There's a typo in it. No, that's okay. There's just there's been lots of changes let's, in let's, my let's lifetime. Let's go first if you like. Okay, go ahead. Drastically changed since 1969 on Memorial Day, on, on uh, Good point. Labor Day. Labor Day. On Labor Day every year, the town would shut down. I mean, we could have 60,000 people in town at 9 o'clock in the morning. By 5 o'clock at night, all the stores were closed, boarded up, and, and we just became kind of a ghost town compared to what it's like in the summertime. So since then, uh, through the efforts of a lot of people throughout the years, uh, the town has really kind of stayed open after uh, Labor Day and a lot more things are happening like the car shows and, 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 and whatnot. So the town has really blossomed that way, but all for the good. And also, the I'm sure, I'm sure Joel Lane will take credit for this, but uh, <laughs> the condos that are on the beach, we never had any condos on the beach. And Those are the 80s, and right? Starting, yeah. in, starting yeah. in the 80s, uh, you started to see the condos being built. That's the biggest change I've noticed. Yeah, and the, a crazy thing about that, one of the big controversies, mm -hmm. the condos had to be no more than eight stories high. We didn't have a fire truck with a ladder that high. So that was a big issue, and I don't remember how it all that, well, obviously we do now, but that was a big question people had, like, oh my God, if there's a fire, how are you going to get to the top floor? So that was big. Um, along with what Peter just said, I, as a kid growing, in, growing up in Old Richard, always had a summer job from the time I was 14. I was a waitress at the Lobster Power restaurant, which is not there anymore. Um, it, it was attached to what was the flagship motel, but that's name changed too. Because we were old orchard kids, we all had summer jobs. There were no sports camps or academic camps, so it wasn't like you had other options. That's what you did. Because we had to work up till Labor Day, our schools were open in the, were closed in the summer an extra week after Labor Day. It was all about us having time to get ready for school. That's what the state mandated, how many days you had to go to school. So we had that break. Um, the thing I remember most about high school was uh, the Palace Ballroom in the summer. That was so spectacular. It's now where Joe's t-shirt place is, right? Oh, uh, yes. Across from the four of us. The, the capital. Capital. Yeah. The capital. Yeah. Anyway, it was where the a, roller coaster is. Yeah. It was a big ballroom, and back in the day, I mean, you can name some rock stars now. Back in our time, they came to Orchard Beach, and it was just wonderful. I mean. They won't make much mean much to you, but Dick Clark was a big show on TV, I and he who came. He is. Okay, he came once with tons of stars, all one night. Peter Paul and Mary were here. Chubby Checker, uh, the night Chubby Checker was there, my girlfriend Crystal Marshall and I were there, and he called her up on stage, and she did a twist for Chubby Checker, and still my heart, it was amazing. That's famous. That's famous. 
the cool thing I thought was um, my good friend Karen Kelly and I would go to these dances. And I, I had these ugly shoes. They were beetle sneakers my father got. And I, we would take our shoes off as soon as we left her house so our parents didn't see. And we'd walk barefoot to the palace ballroom and dance barefoot. Because we thought, I mean, we were like tribe hippies. We thought we were cool. Well, I got planters watch that summer and it wasn't pretty. It wasn't fun. Well, the dances were like two or three nights a week. And even when I was waiting on a table, I'd go home and change and we'd go around nine o'clock at night. It was just wonderful. It was wholesome. There was no alcohol. Um, it was just back in a time when kids loved to dance. I don't, I don't know if you guys have school dances as much. Yeah, we do, but everybody just talks. <laughs> dance around. Uh, and that's one of the biggest changes I've seen. I mean, when I was a kid, ballroom dancing and the big band sound was phasing out. And then the rock stuff started. Yeah. And I have to say, I think the music of the 60s is the best music that ever was and ever will be. I'm a little prejudiced. But even some of that music is around today so that you can appreciate it. Yeah, I know Louis Armstrong. Well, you recognize, when you came to the museum, you recognized some of the instruments, right? I, 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 saw, I recognized all of them. Well, <laughs> I saw Mr. Shavo um, not long after that, and I raved to him about what a great band program we have. The kids know so much about that. He was very pleased. But he's never been there. So we got to get him down to that museum. Yeah. I, I told you about the overtone luster. Yes. <laughs> and you, you're the one that remember Diz, you know, Dizzy Gillespie, right? Yep. Yeah. How many kids your age? Are you in band? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I am. Yeah. And you, you, you knew of Dizzy Gillespie? Yeah. Wow. Emily, yeah. come on. That's unusual. Hey, no flies on you. I'm sure you're involved in a lot of good stuff, too. There's so many things yeah, to Matt, do. Max looks like he could be a good dancer. He wouldn't stand around with the dance. I know. Do you stand around and just talk, or? Um, you mean, yeah. I, I, mean, I think you do. I do both. Well, get things going. Get some dancing. Dancing is great exercise. Bring back to 60s. Oh, my. Have a 60s dance. Hey, oh, my yeah. God. That would be We so don't have good. any more dances of the year, yeah. but next, next year. year. Next yeah. year. Yeah. You there should. You Put that Bring on the top of the list. You could dress in the 60s outfits. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Speaking of fires, did you hear about the fire yesterday at the campground? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Can yeah, you tell I me know. more about I it? I saw it. It was bad. Well, it was one of those uh, camp cottage things. Yeah. How did it, it wasn't the real one. It, it must have been the propane tank. Cause well, remember there was a fire there a couple of years ago. Yeah, there was. And that was because of the railroad sparks. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, Orchard's fire history is not So good. what was lost? Did they lose any? Uh... I think somebody died. Oh, oh wow. And bad. two houses were destroyed. Yeah. Okay. You live in that area? So uh, no, I don't. Okay. I, um, we saw the black smoke, and all, there were rescue vehicles yeah. one by one. They called in Saco, they called in Biddeford, they called in Portland, because it was, I'm assuming it was gas. Yeah, wow, that's scary. Yeah. That is scary. Probably wow. probably, yeah. And where they're so, they're so close together. Well, the campgrounds are like that as well, those tiny little cottages. Yes. Anyway, what about the OOB fires? Did you, were you around for any of those? Oh, oh, I can talk about okay, one. Yeah, 1969, the year man went to the moon. 1969 seems like the year. It was a huge year. Yeah, it was this guy year. was in Vietnam, and back then there were no cell phones, so all we had were The letters. Vietnam War? Yeah, he's yeah. a veteran. Yeah. Lots of letters. He won't tell you, I don't know. I have to share. Anyway, here's the deal. That summer, Peter was in Vietnam, Michael was born, my son Mike, and what I did was, the, it was crazy, he was an infant, he was born June 25th, and in July, Nan went to the moon, and it was televised, all snow, but it was televised like the middle of the night, so I got him up, held him like this so he could say later that he had seen Nan land on the moon, and then the big fire happened in 1969, and that's when Noah's Ark, the Mary Ground, oh, that was so beautiful. Well, the mirror ground was beautiful. Noah's Ark was kind of crazy. Quick story. When I did oral histories, I heard a scoop story about the mirror ground. Want me to tell you what it was? Sure. Okay. During Prohibition, when alcohol was illegal, this is okay. Yeah, appropriate. Just okay. explain yeah. what Prohibition is. Yeah. You know, did you know that from American yeah. history? All right. Anyway, people would make their own liquor. And, of course they would. Okay, well, supposedly the, the wooden horses on the merry ground, the tails could unscrew. And so people would leave messages where you could get this liquor. And I'll be appropriate. 
they would unscrew the horse's tail, put a bottle of booze in, screw it back on, and then somebody would pay and they'd tell them what horse it was in. And they would say the booze is in the horse's butt. Tail. Tail. Anyway, this man told me this story and I, I've never heard anyone dispute it. So I thought that was, I love hearing things like that. That it, you know, you could kind of, it makes it real. You know, not, not, not just dates and names, but real. Yeah. But that merry-go-round, there was only two in the whole world like that merry-go-round. Yeah, tell her about the, the fire in, in the scene oh, it, in 69. Oh, it was awful. I mean, the whole, I was in, in my house where I live now, and my mother called me, a friend of hers was a summer resident and kind of had a cottage up on a hill, and from where she was, it was on Hillcrest Avenue, she thought the whole town was burning. And she called and said, get Janie and the baby out because the fire's gonna hit all of us. That's how big it was. It, it, I mean, if you can picture the square downtown, totally in flames. I mean, everybody, my father was down there helping to direct traffic, and it was, it was huge. But if you study the history of Old Orchard, we had one big fire after another, even up to recent times. But that was the wagon wheel. Right. Although that wasn't as big as. No, no, but the thing yeah. is, I mean, some of the do a really cool history, well, sad, but cool, on the fires that have taken place in Old Orchard and how they've changed so much. So that, that was big. The Palace Ballroom didn't burn down, it was torn down in 1967. There was no parking, so big bands that had venues would not go to a place where people couldn't park. I mean, back in the day, people didn't have cars, they used trolleys, so having a, a place like that downtown was great. But then as time went on, they couldn't get enough big bands to come or rock stars because there was no place for people to park. I heard like Queen performed here and at the ballpark. Some other big rock bands. Yes, and yes, ballpark. that was the ballpark. And we saw a couple of shows there. Um, Celine Dion. Celine Dion, who was the backup. She was just, she was unknown. And who was the guy that said mm. he had long curly hair? He was like an 80s guy. And then he cut it off and was going bald. Oh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, he was the lead. And she was just the person that came on first. Tiny little thing. And she sang, and it was just amazing. That voice just filled. That was a great place for concerts. But that didn't last too long because people in the area didn't like the noise and the traffic was horrible. But it was pretty well controlled because they could only have music till 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. That's all part of the ballpark history, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Did the ballpark have that big space to park back in the day? Yes. Like that big grass area? Abs absolutely. And that, my son, Mr. Flaherty, the principal, can tell you, because he was a parking attendant during that time. And boy, did he have stories. I can't him. imagine him as a parking attendant. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, almost. Oh, he, he, almost was. All, he and all of his friends were. Oh, yeah. They, and they had great attendant. stories. They did funny, crazy stuff. Still just taking pictures. Oh. oh. Oh, I'm just kidding. You guys are amazing. I can't believe the preparation you put into this. I hope you're going to get all kinds of good points for this, right? This is like your big project. It, yeah, it's one of our big. It is our biggest of the year. Yeah. Wow. Our second biggest, I think, has probably been. Can't think of it, but it was way back in. Okay, so tell me, is this more than one subject area? Is this English? History. This is everything. Everything. It should be. It should be. Oh, yeah, we have more than one person. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we're the unusual ones. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. You have the pop star and <laughs> the other guy. Yeah. yeah. The other other guy. The oh, normal wait. guy. The normal. It, no offense, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind being normal. Okay, let's move on. All right. Okay. Do you miss being a kid, and why? Oh my! I could, yeah. Well, go ahead. My truth? Yeah. I don't think I ever stopped being a kid. I think. That's true. I agree. That's that's why I loved teaching. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, you had to be serious, but I think I'm kind of in a time warp, and I think even now I think like a fifth grader. I just, I I think fifth graders, sixth graders too. I'm not saying that you aren't. Cool as cool can be. I, I sometimes uh, go down and volunteer at Jameson for the kindergarten kids, and they're precious. But they don't really get sarcasm, and it, I don't know. 
I just can communicate better. Uh, but a kid in the orchard when I was growing up was very different than today. We had so few distractions. Anytime we played, it wasn't, you know, like video games. It was all here. So when I was telling you we played in the campground, those huge trees were castles. And, and you just had no end to your imagination. And, and you were unlimited. And your friends kind of, we all hung out together, neighborhood kids. But it was such a mixture. And the thing I remember most about that is my house wasn't too far away. And at a certain time, my mother would ring a bell. That's how we knew it was time to come home for dinner. And we had to be home. If we were in a place where you couldn't hear the bell, we were in trouble. But up till then, we were on our own. It was great. So yeah, there were a lot of things about being a kid. I, 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 think, I think it's were a lot safer for us children. But at least we didn't know the danger. You guys, it's 24-7 news. It's frightening to hear some we, stuff. We would, I think all, all across America, kids in, in, in the 50s and 60s, 50s especially when we were younger, yeah. uh, kids would come home from school, take off their school clothes, oh, yeah. put on their play clothes, yeah. and and be gone till it, to a baseball field or a basketball court or whatever whatever season it was, and you'd just be playing until it got dark and go home for supper. Till you were hungry. Make sure you were there on time. Yeah. yeah, I would have loved to be a kid in the fifties. It, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it, yeah. it, now it, with all the news and horror stories, nobody wants to go outside. Well, and the sad thing is, Emily um, and Matt, I keep Matt. I'm sorry, and Matt Mikey. And Mikey. The news then was at six o'clock at night, and we all heard it, but it was no opinion. It was facts. When Peter was in Vietnam, I lived with my parents. And the news would come home at six o'clock and my father would turn it off because he wanted me to hear the casualties and all this because there was no direct communication between us so that was fearful for me but until the assassinations i think that's when i started being fearful um what 68 was when martin luther king was assassinated well no kennedy i was a junior in high school and um in this building and it came over the loudspeaker. The principal at the time, Mr. LaPelletier, turned the radio on. We heard this, like, static. 1963. Yeah. And the announcement was that Senator, uh, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas, Texas. And I'm telling you, you could hear a pin drop in this entire school. I mean, like, people talk about 9-11, which was horrendous. But for me, that was the end of innocence. And I remember they, we all left school that day and nobody knew what to say. And we all went home and it was televised for four days. And the, the most startling thing was, um, they had arrested the man that killed Kennedy. Um, man, my mind's gone. Anyway, well, it'll come to me. He was, he, the day or two after, they were bringing him out of the jail through a tunnel into the courthouse to arraign him. And as he came through, Jack Ruby, this man reached, Lee Harvey Oswald killed him, reached out, and while we were watching television, Lee Hardy who? Lee, Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald, Oswald killed Oswald. Kennedy. Okay. Lee Harvey Oswald. Jack Ruby, and we never really found out the whole story behind it, reached into the crowd. That was before surveillance and you know people being checked for weapons. And you watched on TV while they put a gun right into his chest and fired and killed Lee Harvey Oswald before we yeah. really knew Live on TV. what triggered all that. It was startling. Startling. Yeah. startling. Well, going back to that the original question, uh, do you miss? Oh, I'm sorry. See, I told be, you, I just get a, all. Being a kid, oh, well, well, I was just going to speak for Jane and I both. We both uh, taught fifth grade for together. A long time. Years. Then you became an administrator. Yeah. Yeah. When did you guys get married? I'm assuming you're married. Oh, we are married. Okay. We got married in 69. Yeah. At 69 again. Another, yeah, it was a great year. And, uh, yeah. So what were you going to say? Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, we we got to hang around fifth grade kids for all those years we were teaching. So kind of made you, kept, kept you in contact with what it's like to be a 10, 11 year old, 12, 11 year old. Yeah, and the thing I found, once, uh, once my so, kids... Oh, it's a good career to go into. It is a good career. It's a noble career. It's a tough career. But you, number one, you got to like kids. I don't care if you're the most brilliant person in the world. Kids can tell if you don't like them. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can tell. They, you can put on a facade. You can do whatever you want. And teachers try to tell you that they're... Mm. Don't get but me going. you know. You know. You know they don't yeah, like you. Yeah, you can tell. Like, everybody mm -hmm. doesn't like somebody. And that's fine. I, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. But if you're really good at your job, that is so masked, they can't tell. Or you find a child that seems to be having a real hard time, and you get them to trust you by letting them know you care. That's huge. That's really huge. Like the seventh grade teacher. Oh, I know you had a seventh grade teacher. Mr. Nye. Yes. I had all his kids in fifth grade. Well. Yeah, I did. How many? Four boys. The Nye guys. <laughs> Cool kid. I know one of them. His name's Adam. Yeah, and he's actually getting married this summer, and I'm, I'm going to that wedding. That's the cool thing. I think Facebook's allowed that. We've been able to stay in touch with a lot of our former students. I mean, some of them are like Chris. Is I just ran. In, I just ran into a student of mine. Yes. Uh, at Market Basket two days ago. Yeah. And she reminded me. She said, "I'm 58 years old now." And I thought, hmm. Yeah. Well, we were 10 when we started she teaching. Was, well, she was. Excuse me, my Ow. very first class. If you don't mind me asking, no, we weren't. We weren't. what year were you born? 1947. 46. I'm 72. You must be I'll, 70. I will be 73. This year. He's a lot older than I am. <laughs> oh, sure, a lot. Yeah, no, no. Age is relative. It's all, it's all keeping busy and, and being relevant. And I would have thought you were in your 60s. You, 20s, by heart. Oh, I'll take, I'll take the hard age. I like that. Yeah, but I would really have thought you were in your 60s or maybe 50s. You don't Thank look 70s. You. Yeah. Thank you. You don't look 70s. It's funny, when you get to be this age, your your thoughts of what old is is very different. Yeah, it changes. It totally changes. I mean, if someone said 72 when I was your age, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel old? Well, no. That's a very bad question. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I mean, yeah, there's some aches and pains I never had before, but no. I tell you, mentally, I think I'm still a fifth grader. Of course you do. And that was not my favorite year in school. That was tough. That was a, that was a very hard year. I did not like fifth grade. No. That was last year. I didn't like it at all. No. I didn't like my, I hated my teacher. Same. Okay. Same. Oh, I'm sorry. This is all. Stop saying any names. Oh, my teacher's dead. So well, I can well, say stuff. Yeah. Talk privately. Yeah. <laughs> I think my fifth grade teacher's probably going <laughs> to wake up <laughs> soon enough. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. This is I got what year did you graduate high school here and what was like senior year here like at like at the high school? No, look at him. He graduated from Portland. I'll tell you my year. I think I told you this when he came from Museum. It was 1965. And they were renovating the gym in this building. It wasn't the gym you guys have now. Um, there was an addition for That wasn't building. the gym by the art room? Yes. Yeah, I, I heard Mr. Nye saying that I eavesdropped on the teacher's conversations. All right. I eavesdrop on their conversations all the time. That's a bad thing, but I do. And I bet you get a lot of good scoop. Anyway, I think I, I also told you that because the gym was being renovated, there was no place for the graduation. Because back then, there was no, they didn't graduate at the pavilion because that really wasn't there. It was a much smaller bandstand. So we had to graduate from the palace all the way. Oh, my God. We went on that stage. This is the same place where we'd gone to all the dances and seen all the stars. And there was this great big sign above the stage, show place of the stars. The sad thing is, I see a lot of my old classmates uh, now that were all retired. No one has a picture of us on that stage. But we're the only class in the history of the high school that graduated from the show place of the stars, the class of 1965. Senior year here was fabulous. Oh, we thought we were the cats. Meow. Um, I was on the yearbook staff. I was the co-captain of the cheerleaders. We had superlatives back then. Our parents weren't too pleased because I got loudest, biggest, flirt, and funniest. Not most academic. And none of the good, you know. Academic. Yeah, no, I wasn't an acad academic. academic. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, um, and we did things differently then. The senior week was everything. You had the prom. Baccalaureate, graduation. Um, we didn't have the, the senior grouping they have now that started, oh God, 20, 30 years ago where they have the non-alcoholic gathering, all the kids go, people are involved. I think they still do Yeah, that. I know at Scarborough High School, they take a big trip. Yes, okay, well, we had yeah. no, oh, funny story. Our senior year, 
Uh, the class before us, everybody starting in a freshman year would put money aside in your treasury so that you could make a trip to New York City. Well, the class before us had been so bad in New York, we couldn't go. We were punished. They wouldn't let us go because the class of 64, really. It didn't taste bad, did it? No, it didn't. I think you drank too much coffee. Yeah. No, no, this is me on a regular day, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. Not even with coffee? No. Anyway, it, it, senior year here was cool. And, and the thing is, our high school was small like it is now. So your friends ran the gamut. You had friends that were freshmen, sophomores, juniors. It wasn't like we were all real clicky. It was just seniors. Everybody was friendly with everybody. And the class sizes haven't changed all that much. It's a lot easier. No. So your, what was your graduating class size? Oh, uh, that was in City Hall. Yeah. How many? Uh, 420. 72 in my class. So. I have one off-topic question. Do you mind how long this goes? Do you? I don't know. I like talking. I just talk. Oh out. no, I don't mind. No, we don't have a. Tight I know schedule. you like talking. You just don't talking. want you to miss miss lunch. Well, next thing we have is allied arts. But anyway, back to the topic. Um, are there any other questions? I promise I won't talk so much. Well, oh, what has made you want to stay here in OOB as an adult? And do you still feel that way? Okay, so I, I'd like to make a pitch to him. We're never moving from Orange Beach. No. Nope. We were, you know, when, when we first Are you going to get married here? And I, no. uh, I want to get sprinkled here. Probably, maybe. Yeah. I may be out in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, but Orange, Orange Beach is a great community to live in and to bring up kids. My biggest concern, and I think we both share this, is there's a lot of homes being built now. A mm -hmm. lot of construction yeah. in Orange Beach. Including all the, all the old abandoned and homes. They're, they're, but they're all too expensive for young, for young families. families. We would love to see a lot of construction, affordable construction, so that young families, a husband and wife with one or two or three kids, could actually afford to buy and live here and fill our schools up with kids. Yes, since we're such a tourist attraction, I feel like times are changing. We need more kids in our schools. Yeah, I don't want to live in a 55 and older community, and if you haven't noticed, most I literally live in a 55 and older community. Where do you live? I live on West Grand Avenue. Okay. All 55 and older. Yeah. No kids. My sister lives in Dune. In well, Dune. How, far, in that, how far out of West Grand are you? Um, two blocks away from the beach, but close to, you know, where the soda fountain is? I'm a couple blocks away from the soda fountain, but I'm like over here and the soda beach is like Ocean Park, right? Yeah, the oh, Ocean oh, Park God, store. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah. I don't live in Ocean Park. I'm a little like maybe this way. a quarter of a mile yeah. Yeah. away from Ocean Park. Yeah. Yeah. The sad thing is a lot of the people moving in and I'm not close to us. I'm not saying anything negative, but they're from away. They're older. So they don't feel connection with schools, which is why I think it would be wonderful if there was more community service. If kids somehow could do things that these people from away could see, make school relevant for them. So when it's time to pass school budgets, they don't think, oh, well, it's got nothing to do with me. I mean, I don't think a town is a town without a good school system. And I would love to see more kids. I love this school system. My parents love it. When I was, when I went to school in New York, when my mom had a job there, we still lived here, but we had an apartment there. And that school was just awful. There were so many kids that couldn't, keep track of everybody it was the when we came here it was such a small class and it was just great yeah yeah, yeah that's the thing i think and you knew everybody yeah yeah if i had to be a teacher i would be i would teach here yeah, yeah definitely well think about coming back and being a teacher here. actually the, it would be pro it would probably be a band director though i want to be a band director. well why yeah, can't you be there you go you'd be just in time for mr shaver to retire Oh, no, he's not the band already. director. Oh, no, he's the right. music teacher. He's the music that's teacher. Right. Mr. Latin means the yeah, band director. Right. right, and he's got a few more years. But then Mark Manduka, who's my cousin, I used to babysit for. Yeah, him. Mr. Manduka. He's he's he'll go sooner than later. Probably before you are ready to be the band director. But yeah, our reputation for music in the yeah. is probably not the high school. Maybe maybe here. Cause... Well, this is where you make the difference because you got to yeah, get them young. You have to teach them. Yes, you, and you, I would change it. You to would probably be surprised at how many of the teachers. K to 12 actually grew up in a Beach. Yeah. Oh, there are a lot. Yeah. I don't know about Mrs. Day, but I feel like yes. Oh, Mrs. Yes. Day. Yep. She graduated. She and, and her brother. Yeah, she's like 10 years younger than I am. Her, she brother, her brother taught here. 
Oh, yeah, her brother did. Yeah, yeah. I know we're boring you guys. If you're no, no, I'm not bored at all. Me either. Actually, Mrs. Day's family. You two are interesting. I interviewed a high schooler on uh, two high schoolers on Monday. They were interesting, but not as interesting. Well, when you've lived as long as we have, we have lots of stories. Mrs. Day's uh, maiden name is Angel Sandy, and That's a her mouse her smaller. father across the street where the store is, the little gas station. Gas station. Yeah. Oh, Paul. Paul's? Yeah. Yeah, it that, used to be that, Santi's. It used to be Santi's garage. It was a garage and a, a little convenience little, store. Little store. Yeah. And it was they were, they owned it for years and years. And that's where we'd go and when we were breaks. Everybody would candies. stop there and buy penny candy. They yeah. sold more penny candy oh, yeah. than, than anybody in town. It's like now Pure Fries is the thing. Oh yeah. my God. Me and my friend went bike riding and we go bike riding every weekend and we always get a Pure Fries. It's so good. Our youngest son worked at at the uh, fry stand. He was one of the fry guys. I feel like we're leaving you two out. You guys have I know. Come anything. on. Get involved. Um, Say something. Um, All right. What's your favorite thing to do now in Old Orchard? Either one of you. Both well, of you. Uh, seeing my friends at school and like talking to them. Huh? So what do you do when you're not in school? We usually just uh, play video games with my See? friends. Yep. Uh, sometimes I would go to downtown with my friend. Yeah. And are you allowed, you're allowed to get downtown on your own now? Yeah. You're old enough? Yeah. yeah. I used to not be allowed to. I know. Until last weekend. <laughs> oh, that's a big break. You know, sixth grade's a good time. So, Max, you grew up, you've lived here your whole life? Um, no, I, I came here at 2012. Before okay. here, I was in Ohio. Oh, wow. Ohio. What brought you here? Uh, I don't know. I don't Just your parents know. moved here? And, yeah. yeah. And what about you, Mike? So nine years, so, so you've done all your school years. I know with friends. Hanging out with friends? Yeah. And how long did you say you've been here? Three years. Three years. Where were you before? Wyndham. Okay, and that's not that far away. Yeah. How do you like Old Orchard? It's better than Wyndham. It's better. You know what's great about Old Orchard, and that hasn't changed, is that you live in a fairly small town for like eight months, yeah. and then you're in a city, kind of. And I remember thinking that because of that, I, as I went, grew up and went other places, I wasn't intimidated by bigger places because we had it all. And you certainly do now. Yeah. When, uh, so, you know that hospital in Portland? That's where I was born. But Main I, Med? Yeah, Main yeah. Med. I was born in Main Med. And I lived the first two years of my life with my mom and my grandmother at my grandmother's house in Scarborough. Yep. And then we got a little apartment here. And then we got another apartment. And then we moved to where we live now. And yep. we've been living there for almost 10 years. Yeah. And... If you had, yeah, you yeah New, well, nine years right now. You mentioned right? New York. Yeah, but we only had an apartment there, so I could yeah. go to school. But we didn't live there. We came back every weekend. Oh, wow. We didn't really live there. Okay. We did, it just, was just our backup place. That's where <laughs> mom worked. Yeah, my mom works for TD Bank, but now she works here. Oh, okay. For TD Bank. Yeah. Okay, so you would just commute back to yeah. watch it every weekend. Yeah. You guys play any sports, any of you? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I think in 2017 or 16, I played soccer in there. Yeah. No interest now, or maybe when you get no. to high school, you'll wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. What How about you, you Mikey? You playing anything? Mm -hmm. Football, basketball. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Yeah. So, who, yeah, your football coach is? Um, I've been playing since fourth grade. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm still with Claude. Chris. I think Claude. Claude. Yeah, his name starts with a C. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I never played. That was that's a change. When I was in high school, um, girls didn't really play sports. And I look back and you see, I hate the woman discrimination. Well, it was the worst thing for me was once we were married and I realized how bad shape I was in. I started running, and I loved it. I'm not saying I was great. It just was. It just felt good. And I look back and think, wow. That was something I could have done in high school, but there wasn't really a cross country team that girls were involved with. Three years ago, the cross country st team started, and I'm on the cross country team, although the season's over. But I've played basketball in the winter, and now I'm on the track team. Well, the thing is so about. So yeah, you're right yeah, I used to play softball, I used to play soccer, but I was never too interested in those sports. Yeah. But you like track? Yeah, I like track. And running's a lot of Just running events? Do you only field events? I. I usually do like the jumping events because they yeah. still involve running, but yeah. throwing events, not yeah. too. No, but you can do like the long jump, other things. Yeah. 
Not oh. the triple jump. Do you triple run the no. uh, maps race in the summer? The what do you call it? So the Maine's fastest Bra breakaway five k. Breakaway five k three miles. It's for scholarships in Orchard. Do you know Orchard Beach High School gives more scholarship money out than any school in this area, including Thornton Academy? Fifty thousand dollars a no, year. No, 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 no. Last year it was like seventy-eight thousand. Sorry, I lied. His group, the Maps group, gives out nine thousand dollars. Nine. Never heard of the Maps five k. No. Yeah. Have, it's called well, it's called no, it's the Breakaway five break, k. Breakaway five k. It's in August. It's a Breakaway five k and fun run. Listen to this, guys. If you ran one mile in this fun run. What would they get? The fun oh, runs for younger kids. Oh, I mean, we, we do the three. Oh, we do them. I get they, three. They get a T-shirt. They get a they medal. Get, they get uh, uh, the best thing. Pizza and fries. They get free rides. Three hours of the rides for free. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's only one mile. I get no. You know oh. what? These guys are too old. Oh, they but, are. You know, well, they, they, twelve. Oh. Are you 12? Yeah. Yeah. That's too old. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Do the three mile race. You can do that. You're in good shape. Yeah. Do you get anything in the three mile oh, race? Oh, God, yeah. This, okay, this is getting way too personal. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know. You probably have to shut us down at some point. So. Well, I think when our teachers come, that's like our okay. dead okay. time. So we got plenty of time. <laughs> Let's move on, though. Did black and white people have to go to the same bathroom? We didn't have discrimination in bathrooms, but this is sad. Back when I talked about the big bands that came to a orchard, this is prior to about 1961, 62. The big name bands very often had black band leaders and black singers. They couldn't stay in our hotels. And growing up here as a kid, I really didn't think much about it. There weren't many black families here, so I didn't even really notice. But the one place they could stay was the Cummings house. Yeah. It was a rooming house. And it still stands, and, and we have a model of it. It was abandoned using. for a while, but right. now somebody is refurbishing it. And the family that owned it were the Cummings family. And this road right here is called the E. Emerson Cummings Boulevard. He was a, a teacher here in the high school. He was a math teacher. He was one of only two families that were black here. And when I was teaching fifth grade, I taught history two blocks. I didn't teach math. I, I didn't really think enough to incorporate that when I talked about civil rights in the United States. Because those band leaders had to stay in this one rooming house, and all the band members either went back to Boston by train, or if they were going to have a two-night uh, gig, they would stay in railroad cars down on the railroad track. They yeah, did you not. Told us yeah, about that. they were not allowed to stay in the hotels. And I think back, and it makes me sick to think about. But it was almost like well, we're talking about the forties and fifties, right? I'm talking no up till civil rights, sixty-two-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it, yeah. So we didn't have the segregated bathrooms that they had in the South or the segregated water fountains. Um, and I remember vividly on television watching when this civil rights movement started. And I remember seeing kids trying to, well, young people trying to use the white water fountains. And they had attack dogs going after them. They had fire hoses. Yes. It's just, it, it's beyond belief. And I, I have to say that I think right now that there is. There is some of this coming back, or maybe it's always been there, and, and people have kept it kind of under the lid. But I do see a divide in our country that really makes me sad. It should have nothing to do with what color you are. It's your character. It's who you are as a person. Excellent question, by the way. I have another question. Yeah. Did white cops arrest black people back then? Well, you know what? Uh, there, there weren't many blacks that even lived. Uh, in this neck of the woods. In, in, in this, this, uh, this state of Maine at that time. Even as myself growing up in Portland uh, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, there weren't that many blacks. I mean, there's all kinds of different nationalities in Portland now, which is wonderful. And here, too. I've noticed a and, lot of diversity. And here. But, I think it's great. But, uh, no, we didn't, we didn't have any problems with uh, the police. And your father was a policeman. No, I'm not trying to be a discriminator, but yeah. I don't think there's any, like, we have a couple, like, any sort of colored people, but there's no completely colored person in the school. Yeah. Like, nobody, can, well, there used to be. Yeah. His name was Niku. He was, like, I'm not trying to be a discriminator. No, no, but it's, like, your, it's, a, yeah. it's a valid point that yeah. we are not nearly as diverse as I wish we could be. 
Um, like uh, cities like LA are very diverse. Oh yeah, right. And, and even Chicago, like Portland, South Port. Oh yeah, absolutely. Chicago. Yeah. All those Seattle, all those yeah. big cities. Yeah. Correct. And I think I don't know the reason for that. I think people go where they feel most comfortable, and yeah. I'd like to think that well, we the city, the city of Portland, though, is extremely diverse now. As a matter of fact, in the school system, I've been told that there's there somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 different languages in the Portland school. We get a lot of French people. Right. Yeah. Sometimes Spanish people. Yeah. It, yeah. I think Spanish is becoming a, a yeah much more. It's becoming more. Yeah. There's a bunch of Canadians. French Canadians and yes. mostly it's Quebec, Ontario, right? And, and it's summer. You're right. It's mostly Ottawa. Summer. Yeah, stuff like that. Well, we're the we're the from what I understand, we're the closest real sandy beach. If you, depending on what part of Canada you live in, so Quebec. yeah. And back when I was a kid growing up, predominantly there were Canadian people from Quebec that came here in the summer. It's more recent years that people from Massachusetts and other parts of the country came. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of. Yeah, right, right. And some Vermont, some New Hampshire, but mostly Massachusetts. Yeah. And yeah. I think they own the road. <laughs> we have a son that lives in Massachusetts. We tease him about that, but mm. he's from Milwaukee originally, so it's I okay. tease everybody from Massachusetts. So. Yeah. Not to be like rude, but you know. No, it's just what we do. It is. Remember, we used to all be one state Massachusetts and Maine in 1820. We were part of Massachusetts. Yeah, and our whole country was a part of Britain. Yes. We got our freedom in right. on July 4th, 1907, I think. No, not 1907. Not to 1907. You gotta go back further than nope. that. 1700. 1776. 76, right. I, wow. I am, okay. I knew the date. I just couldn't think of it. I thought you know 19. what? Date's not all that important. No. So are you it's guys. The, it's the like, bleh. Hey, keep going. No, are you, what kind of history do you have in sixth grade? Um, like what kind? I mean, like, what are you studying in history? U.S. history or world history? Or Did you have world, U.S. history in fifth grade? No, we didn't have anything in fifth grade. <laughs> no U.S. Fifth grade, history? Fifth grade, it was fit. In Mrs. Day's class, it was literally, yep, copy Running. this down. Good. We're good. Go home. There you go. That's your science class. No, no we, social studies. Have but you had U.S. history yet? No. no. That's next year, though. Okay. U.S. history is next year. Seventh and eighth grade? Yes. Yeah, when I was teaching, you studied the Civil War. Well, I have we have minorly, but yeah. yeah, but not like major class about it. Yeah. It used to be in fifth grade. That was why I love teaching fifth grade. I do American history to blocks. We have heard about like the Civil Rights Act, the Holocaust, and but kind of out of context, not in a. Yeah, okay, got it. We went to the hall. Well, some of us went to the Holocaust Museum yesterday. Really? Not the one in Washington. No, no, no. But the one in Portland. Yes. Oh, yeah. Or Augusta. 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 Yeah. yeah. Wow, awesome. And that's fairly new. Yeah. yeah. And we read about some of the people. Yeah. Danny had some of the people. Yeah. That's awesome. What was Do your that. first job in OOB? Or I, well, I babysat, but that wasn't really a job. I was a waitress at the Lobster Pound restaurant. And, oh, I got a funny story about that. And it's tied into the Hell's Ballroom. You Back really in the day, the oh my God, it was such a cool place to be. There was a group, and they were called Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Now, you may not know that name, but have you ever heard the song Wooly Bully? No. no. <laughs> or Hey There, Little Red Riding Hood? I have heard that one. Okay, anyway, they were performing that night, and they came into my restaurant. It wasn't mine. And I waited on them. They all had shore dinners. Well, Sam the Sham had this great big black creepy beard. He was just a massive person. And he was on that side of the table. So when I served him lobster, he licked my arm from here to my elbow. Pretty I gross. can't ever listen to those songs and not get like. Wait, what do you mean by lick? Just what I said. Lick, uh, on what? my arm. They left me a $25 tip, which back then was like, wow. But it was didn't it make lot? up. What's that? Was it a lot back then? Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. A lot of things money wise have changed. That's a big change. When I went to college and, and Peter as well, it was a thousand dollars a year for everything. Now it's like twenty thousand. Oh no, twenty. UNE, University of England, seventy thousand a year. Kind of rough. Well, it would like to get like a full scholarship, but Oh yeah, but you gotta you gotta work hard to get that. You have to work at that. Yeah. And like get a job. Don't go to school for the time. 
Well, you can you can go to you can go to community college for well, a couple yeah, that's, years. That's cheap. It is. It's like eight thousand. Community there. college, you can like get the courses like heating and ventilating. Well, no, you can get some. You can get some basic courses that will allow you then to transfer to. Right. A, a but to college. be like a teacher or like a band director, you have to go to special colleges and stuff. Like you that. could still do your first two years at a community you college. Still, you, yeah, you, you can still. Get and then go major courses that you need, basic courses at a two-year school. And, and get then, an associate and degree. Transfer. And then you transfer, and you need two more years at a higher price school. Like it's something different. How did you spend your birthdays in OOP? Ice cream. Blah, blah. <laughs> Not oh, like I that. have a question. I really want to know. Were, were there any band programs for you? Or? Yes, oh my god. I want to hear this. Okay, it wasn't good. Not a good story. Um, Mr. Patan, I wasn't a band member. As a matter of fact, they were I don't like to get, you anymore. Well, it wasn't anything anybody wants to do. It wasn't cool. It wasn't presented like it is now. It wasn't started in fifth grade. It was like, I hate to say it, I remember at one point there were like seven or eight kids in the band, and two of them were non-blowers. They just faked it. It, it just wasn't. They just fingered. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think when that change really came. Oh, I can't think of his name. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Made a huge difference. It went from nobody wanted to be in the band. Uh, to Himalayan? Be, yes. Yeah. People were clamoring. They just... Mr. Hamelinian. Oh, yeah. first. He was a tough taskmaster, but he got he got the band to a place where you were proud to be in it, not like, oh, you're a loser. And I mean, then now the band we get you get when Mr. gold, when right? Mr. Shavel came. Oh, he was the he rock was star. Because he's the one that got he, it going in fifth grade. He got so many kids involved in music and band. And and they were everybody was enthusiastic and, and it's carried on. I would give him. Oh, he, yeah. Mr. He, Hamelini was just beginning. That was high school. But right? then when George came. George Shabo is what got the band yeah, from the yeah, ground up. He deserves the. He deserves all the credit. I love The lion's like like share of the credit for yeah. the music program. And a lot of it was his personality, <coughs> too. I mean, oh, okay. he's tough, but kids know when he likes yeah. you. He likes you. Yeah. Miss, you can tell when Mr. Shabo directs the band for, like, when filling in for Mr. Lavin, you can tell Mr. Lavin is a softy when Mr. Shabo starts doing it. Well, Mr. Lavin... I Mr. Lavin gives you, like, four chances. Mr. Shabo gives you one. But remember who trained Mr. Lavin. Mr. Shabo. Yeah. And Mr. Manduka... Uh, right. When Mr. Manduka was, you know, still here, Mr. Lavin was Mr. Yeah, Manduka's student. Yeah. yeah. Which shows you that... Oh, that's correct. Yeah. It just shows you that, that the Lordship Music Program is so incredible. That people choose to come back here and work in the program. So yeah, but Mr. Loudman's taught me everything I know. That's wonderful. But Mr. Shabo's taught me a couple things too. <laughs> Mr. Shabo's daughter is a music teacher. Is yeah, I'm going Scott. to her summer camp. Scott. Oh, are you? I'm going to her summer Missy. camp. Yes. Yes. I didn't have her full time, but she was in my history class. Very she's, cool. She's also very good. Yeah. And his other son is at Jameson School. I had him in fifth grade. Jeremy. Oh, George. And George is the oldest son, right? George worked He's a at, tuba player. Yeah. Mr. Shibo's son worked at Jameson. Yeah, that's he worked, Jerry. He worked here too. Okay. George worked here. Yes. 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 Okay. And we can just save this last question since. So this is. It says at, always ask everybody at the end. Is there anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> I think we've done that. I think we put a lot of else's in, in a lot of other questions. Yeah. Okay, what year did you move, or were you born in Old Orchard? I'm not sure if I was born here. I, I was born in Bitter, at the Weber Hospital in Bitterford, but we moved around a little. But I don't know if I lived in Scarborough for a year at Tenson Corner, or I don't know when I moved, but I'm going to try to find out. So I could have lived here all my life, and I could have lived here like 60 years. I'm 71. I could have lived here 70 years, but I don't know when we moved. Exactly. Okay. Do you have any siblings? If so, do they live in town? Yeah, I have uh, five brothers and sisters. Three of them are living in town. 
two of them away. One's up in Fort Kent and one's down the Middleboro Manor. What is your favorite childhood experience in OB? Well, I, I, I would say when we were little, we used to go on the rides a lot. We're the ragamuffin kids around town. Sometimes they put us on the ride just to test them out. We could be on for two hours if we wanted to. <laughs> um, where did you live? Oh, I lived uh, the first place I remember living is uh, on top of the sandbar. That was on Olaka Street. There was three apartments there. Then uh, when I was in the third grade, we moved to Halfway. Right where King Real Estate is now, that used to be Hollywood Motor Court. And the guy also sold apples, everyone called him the Apple Man. That we rented the main house there. Then when I was a junior in high school, my mother bought the house on the corner of Evergreen and 15th Streets. It was a Goshen house. It was a, and we, we moved down there and that's been in the family for us since 1965. This was actually, it still is, probably the English room I was in. And uh, we went to, when I first started school, I lived on Washington Street, School Street actually had schools on it. And there was two buildings. In fact, one of the built the first building that you came up when you drove down from uh, Sauco Avenue was the a wooden building that they built just before uh, Old Washington. It was a two-story wooden building. They built that just before Orchard got uh, got their own town from Saco. We succeeded from Saco, and then after that, they built a bigger building. That was the wooden building we went to was uh, second grade, and the other one you could went to the first and third grade in kindergarten in the bigger building, which is now Centennial Place. It's a a lot of people live there. It's an apartment. Then uh, once you get to the third, uh, fourth, third, fourth, and fifth, well, they built the Jameson around 54, and we we got shipped up there. That's when I had to take, start taking a bus to school. Then uh, they had a federal building that's in between uh, the Jameson and this building, Lone Ranger. And that was an old army barracks. It's a long white building, and there was classes on both sides, and there was a big hallway. And that burned down around. Uh, we went to the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade there. That was the junior high they called it. And that burned down in uh, around the uh, '62. And then, hence, they built. They turned this into a high school and a junior high. Until they, you know, that's how when they start transforming everything over. Then I, yeah, I didn't go to the new high school because we, I was a, our class was the first class to graduate from the gymnasium, from the Queenie gym. But the, the year before that, we didn't have a gym. The class of 65, my sister's class, they graduated from the Palace Playland Ballroom down on Washington Beach where they used to have big dances. Like, all the big stars came here. Dick Clark and his caravan of stars and all those people. You could name anyone in the 60s and they played there. Well, that's where they had to graduate. We're the first class to play, uh, to graduate from the high from the new gym, but we couldn't play in the gym because it wasn't finished yet. We had to play all our games that year over the soccer armory. That was our home court. What year did you graduate from high school? Uh, 1966. The first job I had is, wasn't a real job. I used to help people dig and around. I packed apples for the apple guy. We get the 25 cents for a bag in a box of 12 apples. But when we were little, me and my brother had a, a screen and we'd sift sand or we'd shine shoes. But the actual job. I would say I worked on the pier fries when I was actually on the pier. And uh, I worked there for three years. First year I was a french fry man, and the next two years I was a ice cream man, because 
person, uh, Thomas Frazier, he just passed away. He owned the uh, Fairy Tour and the Fear Fries. Now, which is Fear Fries is down by the East of the Bound by Bill's Pizza. Mm -hmm. Which was your pay when you made that order? Uh, not much. I can't remember exactly, but I got to take back on that question because uh, my first job was caddying when I was seventh and eighth grade. Eighth grade, I was a caddy at the Orchard Beach Country Club. Uh, okay, uh, how much did it pay? I don't know, but I I made it like a hundred dollars a week, maybe a hundred and twenty. But you know, you work long hours. But it was I got what I got the going rate exactly what it was. I don't know. Caddying, I remember you got the a dollar fifty for nine holes, or two fifty for eighteen holes. But they usually the people usually give you a tip besides that. Are there any stories about the history of Old Orchard Beach that you experienced that you would like to share with us? The stories about Old Orchard Beach? Well, I, one that is kind of interesting, I was in photography back then. At 78, when the big storm came and wrecked the pier, well, they had a metal rail until a few years ago in front of the, uh, the uh, merry-go-round. And I was uh, standing on that, on top of that, and taking pictures of the pier, and leaning against a telephone pole. And a huge wave came up. And I, I didn't have time to run. I had to turn around and hug the pole. And I'm standing about this, my feet are this high off the ground to begin with. And it's like on the walkway, so that was three or four feet higher than the, two or three feet at least, higher than the uh, sand, and another three or four feet where I was standing, I had to turn around and hug the pole, and the waves were hitting the back of my legs. So when the, the water went, that, that wave went way over the railroad tracks. So I, uh, when the wave, when the water went down, I got the heck out of there. <laughs> that was kind of, that was just one. There's a million stories. That's one. Something changed throughout your time living there, and have you been infected in it anyway, and how did it make could you repeat that? Yes. Um, what are some things in OOB that drastically changed throughout your time living here, and were you affected by it in any way? Well, the they, one of the the things that I remember was that fire that wiped out the North Arc and the White Way. I was up on a, we were living in Evergreen. I just got out of the military then. I was drafted and I spent most of my time over in Korea, South Korea. But uh, when we get home, we were, up, we were at, there were a bunch of my friends we were hanging around, getting ready to go out for the night. I was around uh, 21 or 22. And I went upstairs to go to the bathroom and I saw this huge red glow down the stairs. I said, hey, something's happening, let's go. So we all headed down, we ran down South Avenue, we get downtown and the the pier, part of the pier, and the white way was all engulfed in flames. And we got there, we helped the firemen pull some hoses and stuff. And then after a while, the, we had to stand back, you know, because it was let them do that. You know, we just helped out in the beginning, but that really changed the whole the whole atmosphere of the town after that. Have you been any? Have you been a witness or victim of any catastrophic events in OOB, and has it affected you in any way? How did it make you feel? I don't, I can't think of anything that's really bad. I'm sure there was things, but I, I kind of block out the bad things and try to think of what the good things. What made you want to stay in OOB as an adult? Oh, pardon me? Oh, what made you want to stay in Old Orchard as an adult? Well, I really like the people here and everything, the beach, and we're like the, they called us the playground of two nations back then because in the summer all of Canada and who knows from all over they came here. So you met a lot of people, you get really diversified and other number of people you could tell, talk to. I just love Old Orchard. What was one of your favorite things to do in OOB? OOB? Do you have a favorite thing to do in OOB now? Well, I, I, uh, I still like to go to the beach a lot. That's probably my favorite 
in the background favorite things, but I, I enjoy almost everything in Overwatch if you said they do. What was one of your favorite things? Wait, sorry. Team Star yeah. <laughs> Why and is it still here? Well, when we were like in high school, we used to hang out on the corner where the uh, Victoria Grand Vic is now. Mm -hmm. Back then, we had a packet order which corner was, and we just back then it was kind of cool to hang out downtown. And that, that was it. It was a prime corner. Big landmarks that people may not know about today that you would like to share. Landmarks. Well, I, there's a, the thing people don't realize is that Old Orchard was a, uh, we were kind of like first in aviation when they were all trying to make a way to fly to Europe. There was like $25,000 bonus for the first person that flew across the Atlantic and a lot of, uh, aviation was just getting started then, so a lot of people were taking off from Old Orchard Beach. There was a hangar. Jones's hangar right down where the friendship is now. And actually, uh, after the war, Charles Lindbergh, he was, a, he was the first one to fly across the Atlantic. They made a movie, maybe you saw it. And uh, he, he landed, he was doing a tour, and he landed at Old Orchard Beach, not on choice. He was supposed to land at the Portland Airport, which was actually at that time in Scarborough. And my father-in-law and his mother, they had a, a summer cottage in, uh, down uh, on Reggio Avenue. And they, uh, they heard the plane. Well, whenever they heard the plane, it was, they would walk down the George's Hangar. They, they were very, it wasn't that frequent. They went down there and there was like 12 people there. And it was Charles Lindbergh landed because uh, the, air, the airport they were supposed to land in uh, was socked in with fog. And he remembered there was one on Owasha Beach, so he landed there. And my father-in-law, he was only like five there. He went down with his mother and they saw Lindbergh with some other people. But when they heard the plane, they probably did the same thing. And uh, he remembered that uh, Charles Lindbergh had a blue sweater on. Was left over from the steel pier. And if you go right near the where the sand is, you see these cement abutments, you know, that hold it up. But if you look inside, there's pieces of steel, and that was the steel pier, and they just poured cement around it when it got older. But they had, uh, not in my time, but my father used to dance. They had ballroom dancing, and they had the movies out on the end. And my father-in-law and his and my mother-in-law, that's where they met, was on the field. And they ended up getting married. And if you went early, you could go to the movie. First, they had a movie, an open-air movie, at the end of the pier. But when I worked on the pier, it was a little different. They had a big aquarium and pinball machines and arcades and steve ball like the palace is now. That was out on the end of the pier. And they had an aquarium, which, which is nice. You can still see the live piranha. It's almost feeding time. The giant sea turtle. They played that record over and over again. So back then we could say it verbatim, you know, like we were <laughs> we just was saying about the fear. But they had nice shops and games, and they even had the Omar would read palms. He was pretty old, and they had a guy right at the beginning. Well, they I I can't forget it. It was the uh, huge merry-go-round. It was one of the there was four. They are made in Germany. It was one of the greatest, probably merry-go-rounds left in the world. It was, uh, and that burned down with that big fire in the White Hall. The thing was huge. And they played Bury, the old music and the old carved horses. That one, that was a sad day. But right at the beginning, when you walked up the pier, the music would be going from the, you almost got in step with it. And there was a guy there, Joe Shatt. He made donuts. He had this machine. They shot the donuts right in the oil, flip them over with a chopstick, and I remember that. And they had Mrs. Curly's people under the pier. It's like an animal farm. She was a very famous woman. She helped develop a lot of strains of mice that are using today. She knew about the genes and stuff before a lot of people knew about them. 
That was the first place I gambled. You could roll roll a nickel down the slot, the little groove, the wooden block that was tilted, and there was a big board to roll around. If it landed on a, a five, you get five nickels. But if it landed on a line, you'd lose a nickel. Well, you could lose, you get one nickel. If it, they had one through five, the number. Did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or pier? Oh, yeah. I, uh, well, the, the concerts really, when I'd grown up, was at the Palace Playland. That's why I was saying almost everyone that was a staff in those days went there. They had a dance on Wednesday and Saturday during the summer. But uh, the concerts at the ballpark, I went to, uh, I'd say, nine-tenths of those. It's a... Uh, that was the last time I saw Roy Orbison. He was leading on, he died about a month later. He was leading off for the, the Beach Boys. But to me, he was, I liked him a lot better than the Beach Boys. He, we kept him on stage a little longer than you're supposed to by ovations. And one more song and this and that. Were you here when the famous bands played? If so, which band was your favorite? Yeah, they're, they're talking about the older bands and I was too young to, Go to those. That was, that's when they started having the, the people I talk about at the palace. Those people mostly played on the pier, so I wasn't impressed with that. Did you ever see any of the horse races at the kite track? No, I was too young for that, but we used to play. Uh, Demolition Derby, they used to call it. They'd get some old junk cars and they'd race them around the track after it was over. I think that closed in the war, and I don't think it ever opened up. You know, World War I. But I never did see a horse race there. Yeah, when I was little, I... Well... Muskie, I met him in 1952. Uh, they had a, I was just little, we still lived in Olaka Street then. They had a big rile, uh, rally down the Memorial Park and they had these big speakers and they're playing. I remember that, but I don't think uh, they were doing a campaign for Eisenhower. And they were all singing, whistle while you work, Stevenson's a jerk. Eisenhower's get the power whistle while you work, but I don't know if I uh, I think I met Muskie and Susan, Susan Collins and Olympia Snow, but I can't think of any real famous people. I mean, those are famous people, but I didn't meet Charles de Gaulle or anyone like that. I was supposed to meet John Kennedy. We were I belonged to Columbia Squires and Bitterfish. And uh, we we saved money to go to Washington D.C. and give him a sword and make him honorary member of the Knights of Col at the Columbia Squires. It's like Junior Knights of Columbia. But they, they, he got killed about two or three weeks before that. So we we just had to go see the grave. Have you seen the dummy railroad? Railroad? Did you ever ride on it? No, that was long gone before I was born. But you, if you go over the bridge in Ocean Park towards Camp Ellis, and you look to the left and you see some wooden pylons sticking up, those were the pylons for the bridge that went across Goosebeer Brook. Was the planes had landed? No, it's, I, well, I was there, we had a fly-in in 76. I was working at the Bitterfit Airport at the time. So I knew some of the pilots that fly in. They had like 20-something planes that landed at low tide. But they also had the replica of the Spirit of St. Louis where John Lindbergh landed in Old Orchard Beach earlier, what I was talking about when my uh, father-in-law went down when he was five. And so there was a big fly-in. And I, uh, I was down there. I asked my girlfriend at the time if she wanted to take a walk down and see the plane. And now she's my wife. And we went down, and one of the flyers that flew in asked if I wanted to take off from the beach. It was time to go. The tide was coming in. 
And that was all in front of the friendship again, because it's real flat down there, and that's where they land. And so uh, we get in the plane, and she waves goodbye to her father and her uncle, and they thought that's the last they're going to see of her, right? And we zoomed around, and one of my friends was in a sailboat out there, and the guy, uh, the pilot, they call him the mayor, he corkscrewed down on him, he just barely, we're sideways in the plane. And uh, then we flew around, he asked me where I wanted to go, and finally, that was it, we're going back to the city airport, we had to hitchhike a ride home. <laughs> but that was really exciting. How did you spend your birthdays in OOB? Oh, my birthdays off. Even at work, they laugh about me because I always took my birthdays off. And uh, whatever we did, we have, you know, when you were little, you had cake and ice cream. When you got older, you went out drinking with your friends. And that was fun. Now, we just, have, you know, have family around. We have a, something good to eat. It's all good. Did you ever go to any of the dances in the ballroom? That's the palace ballroom. Yeah, I went to almost every one there was. They were, they were great. It was uh, it was very peaceful. We didn't the people from our watch wouldn't let anyone fight in there. They said, You guys wanna said, we got people from all over. You guys wanna fight, go down on the beach and fight. We don't allow anyone to fight. What were the restaurants like downtown? Oh, they were kind of nice. My father was actually a cook in most of the rest, uh, a lot of the different restaurants in Olorton. And so, he was, uh, I was first-hand knowledge of most of the restaurants that we had a lot of them. And they were, they were real nice. Uh, it's, the whole thing has changed now from what restaurants used to be and what they are nowadays. <coughs> Things are more trendy, you know. And then more, everything's got to be hot. Good. Spice it up, and if you get something good, you don't want to. Well, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> it's all different. Did you ever eat anything about Well, at one time, I, this is a stuff I get from Dan Blaney because I they had a course of history of all of it. And uh, the one thing I remember is one time we had five different railroad companies waiting to watch it. But that was only happened for a few months. We had the Eastern Railroad, now it's Eastern Trail. That was the original railroad. Then when they started building all the hotels, they wanted the trains to start downtown. So they built the Western Railroad. But they were in opposite places. The Eastern Railroad should be near the beach. And the, you know, so the names are kind of in different places. And they had a railroad that connected them. Before the, you know, before they disbanded one or the other, they were still both operating. And they had a railroad that went right down School Street from up by the Ross Road. That's where it connected. And uh, they had the dummy line. That's four. But in, uh, when they first built the steel, steel pier, it only lasted like seven months because the uh, storm came in, up. Well, anyways, when, when it was open, when the steel pier was open, it was about a mile long, quite quite a ways. I don't know if it was a mile long, but it was a ways out, and they had a miniature railroad. It was actually a, a full-fledged steam engine with a bunch of cars that haul people out to the to the big uh, dance the dance hall that's out there now. That was way at the end, so that was the fifth railroad. Line. 